Hey guys, this is Hemant and welcome to the third episode of this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed the first and the second episode. Previously, we understood what Flashpunk and bitmap blitting was. We created a new action script project in Flash Builder and linked the Flashpunk library. We also created a new game world and added some game elements into the game world and coded the basic interactivity to move the hero, shoot the bullets and show random balloons on the screen. In this episode, we shall add more interactivity by checking for collision between the bullets and the balloons and show the pop graphic for the balloons. We shall also add a second type of balloon, the black balloon or the bomb balloon. So this is where we left off in the previous episode. In this episode, we shall start by defining the types of entities. In a game, we do have many different kinds of entities as you already saw. It is often very useful to define the types of entities to be able to handle them easily later in the development process. For example, if you want to check at any point in your game how many enemies exist in the game world or how many bullets exist in the game world, defining the entity type for these entities could just come in very handy. Let us first define a couple of constants in the game constants class. Let me add a public static const bullet type of string and set the value to bullet. Let me define another constant public static const enemy type balloon string balloon. Let me save this. We shall now assign these values to the type property of our entities. We'll switch to the balloon class and at the end of the constructor we shall add this dot type is equal to game constants dot enemy type balloon. We'll save this. We'll do the same with the bullet class. At the end of the constructor, this dot type is equal to game constants dot bullet type. We'll save this. We'll make use of these properties in a little while. Let's continue by adding a bomb balloon. We shall first switch to the game constants class. We already have a green balloon embedded. Similar to that, we'll embed the bomb balloon and assign that to a constant. So let me add embed source is assets slash balloon bomb dot png. I'll assign that to public static constant gfx underscore balloon underscore bomb of type class. To create a different type of balloon, we won't create a new class. Instead, we'll code some simple conditions in the existing balloon class. So let's switch to the balloon class. And in the constructor of the balloon class, let me add a simple parameter. Let me take these away. Balloon color of type string is equal to green. By default, I'll make the balloons green unless specified from outside. I'll also remove the graphic and mask properties in the super call. Let's now create a private property in the balloon class and assign this constructor parameter to that. Private where balloon color of type string. Inside the constructor, we'll say this dot balloon color is equal to balloon color. We have just stored a parameter to know the color or type of the balloon that needs to be generated. Now inside the constructor, let us specify the graphic of the balloon based on this parameter. So we'll add if this dot balloon color is equal to green, then this dot graphic would be GFX balloon green, else this dot graphic will be equal to new image game constants dot GFX balloon bomb. Our balloon class is now capable of displaying either of the balloons. It just needs a parameter to be passed when we generate it. So we'll save this and go to the game world class. Now here in the update method of the game world class, we will generate a random number either 0 or 1 and add the two types of balloons. So inside this condition, we'll check if fp dot rand of 2 is equal to 0 then we shall add a new balloon. So since we are not passing anything, it will be a green balloon. Else, we shall add 
new balloon of type bomb we'll save this now one small thing is that as we did with the bullets we'll clean up the game world by removing the balloons that have gone outside the stage area on the top so we'll switch to the balloon class and in the update method right after we move the balloon upwards we'll add if this dot y is less than or equal to minus 77 which is the height of the balloon graphic this dot world dot remove of this we'll save this and run the project and that's it we now have green and bomb balloons appear randomly in the game okay the next thing we'll do is to check the collision of bullets with the balloons and if collided we'll pop the balloons out before we do this we'll need to understand the way collision is detected every entity in flashpunk needs to have an area specified that is considered for the hit test uh, it is almost obvious while coding a game that the whole graphic itself might not need to be checked for collision but only a portion of it for example our balloons here shouldn't pop when a bullet collides with the thread that is dropping down from the balloon but as we have done the balloons have the threads as part of the graphic it's a single entity one way is to add threads separately as separate entities and animate them with the balloons this is a very bad idea as the number of objects you generate will almost be double so we specify a hitbox for each of the entities which is what is considered while checking the collision so the first image you see is the balloon graphic this is the entire graphics bounding box and now this is what we actually want to specify just the upper portion of the graphic that should be checked for collision turns out for our balloon graphic the hitbox size would be 40 by 40 pixels now we shall specify the hitbox size for the balloon uh, in the constructor of the balloon class so we'll go to the balloon class and in the constructor we'll specify this dot set hitbox the width will be 40 pixels and the height will be 40 pixels the set hitbox method also has two more parameters which specify the origin of the hitbox as to where it should start from on the image we leave the x and y parameters to defaults by not specifying anything since our requirement is from 0 by 0 pixels of the image we'll save this we shall repeat the same thing in the bullet class too but we'll make sure the whole bullet is considered as the hitbox region that is 2 by 2 pixels so in the constructor of the bullet class we'll add this dot set hitbox width will be 2 pixels height will be 2 pixels now that we have the hitboxes set we can check for the collision of the two objects we shall do that in the update method of the balloon class right before the super dot update call now every entity has a method called collide types so this dot collide types this method accepts an array of types of uh, entities so we'll pass an array with one element right now because we want to check the collision only with one entity we'll pass game constants dot bullet type so this is where we'll use the type property of every entity and we'll also pass the x and y coordinates so it would be this dot x and this dot y this method returns either the entity that has collided with this or returns null if there is no collision we'll store that return value into an object var bullet of type bullet and uh, we shall also type cast it as bullet as we know the return value will be of type bullet next we check if the bullet object that we just created is not equal to null that is if there was a collision with a bullet we'll call a new method called pop we'll write the method now if the collision has happened then we should call this dot world dot remove of this okay let's run it as we click on the screen we shoot the bullets and as you can see when the bullets collide with the balloons the balloons are just disappearing all right just removing the balloons from the world is no fun so let's show a small graphic of the balloon getting popped right before it disappears 
So we shall first embed that asset in our game constants class. So we'll write embed the source is assets slash balloon pop dot png. We'll store that in public static constant gfx underscore balloon underscore pop of type class. Now we shall use this asset in the balloon class. So in order to display the pop graphic for a fraction of a second, we can set a simple counter variable in the balloon class private var pop frames of type integer is equal to 5. We'll make the pop frame or graphic stay on the screen for about 5 frames, which is about 1 twelfth of a second. We'll create another boolean variable private var pop of type boolean is equal to false. We'll set this initially to false as the balloons are not popped when they are created. Once the pop method is called, we'll set it to true. This way, in the update method, we know we can start counting down the pop frames variable down to zero. Now, every time update method is executed after pop variable becomes true, we'll decrement pop frames by one. So in the pop method, we'll remove this line and set popped is equal to true and change this dot graphic to a new image and pass game constants dot gfx underscore balloon underscore pop. Now in the update method of the balloon class, we'll add a condition if this is not popped and we'll put all the code, which is the balloon movement, removal of the balloons out of the screen and collision detection inside this condition. Note that we'll also add an else part to the condition. This will be executed when the balloons popped variable is set to true, which we are doing in the pop method. Here in the else condition, we'll decrement the pop frames by one and remove the entity when the pop frames reaches zero. So if pop frames is equal to zero, then this dot world dot remove of this. Let's save it and run the project. You should now see the pop graphic for fraction of a second once the balloon is popped by the bullet. I think the game is behaving as we need and let us stop it at this for this episode and continue the development in the next episode. We shall also add sounds in the next episode. So see you 